This is Aminta, and you are listening to the Community Partners for Healthy Streams podcast. Here, we feature a new topic every month on different ways you can help prevent water pollution and conserve water at work. Do you hear that? Delicious cooking sounds like these reverberate throughout the county from commercial food service establishments, FSCs for short, such as restaurants and cafeterias. Nursing homes, daycares, even some churches that process food might also fall under this category of FSE. After all the food prep, baking, and cooking is done, byproducts are left over, such as fats, oils, and grease. Together, they are collectively known as fog. It doesn't stop at greasy things like bacon, however. You might be surprised to know that fog can be created from the production of such fan favorites as ice cream, cheese, gravy, cake icing, even salad dressing. So what's the big deal then? Well, it turns out that fog can be a real pain in the drain. As more families rely on takeout and food deliveries for their meals, the food service industry will continue to generate large volumes of fog. And all this fog needs to be properly taken care of. So what can food service providers do about fog? Here to lend us her expertise is Cobb Water Systems Grease Management Supervisor, Emily Krajewski. Welcome, Emily, and thanks for being on our podcast series. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start by going over why fog is a pain in the drain. What happens when fog winds up in the pipes of the sanitary sewer system? Won't it just wash away? I wish it were that simple, and that's a great question. Uh, But unfortunately, no, it won't just wash away. Fats, oils, and grease, what we call fog for short, may seem harmless. However, fog does not mix very well with water. And when fog is poured down the drain, it starts to cool, and it can easily stick to the inside walls of the pipes. Over time, the buildup of the fog can cause blockages, forcing sewage to not only back up in our sanitary sewer system, but possibly in your home, your street, your yard, and other waterways. That can be costly to clean up. If fog finds its way into a nearby storm drain, it has the potential to eventually end up in our local streams or creeks, where it can not only affect the environment, but also the wildlife that live there. So the lesson learned from this is that improperly managing fog is bad for your home, your business's bottom line, and for the environment. Yes, that is correct. What can food service establishments do then to help control fats, oils, and grease? Well, we find that the best steps that they can take are preventative. And that means doing their best to just stop fog and food solids from ever making its way down the drain. We highly recommend training staff members on the importance of these best management practices, such as using the dry cleanup method, like scraping and wiping fog from the dishes and utensils into the trash before using the traditional wet cleaning methods. We also highly recommend that people use the sink strainers to prevent large food solids from ever entering the drain. What about grease traps at FSEs? Could you explain what these are? Sure. All food service establishments, as we define them, are all users involved in the preparation of food or drink for commercial purposes, and they must install a grease trap device that is required to be connected to all grease wastewater fixtures. What grease traps are, they are a device that is there to help reduce the large amounts of fats, oils, and greases that are found in the discharge of these FSCs, like restaurants, schools, daycares, and other commercial facilities, from ever entering into the county's sanitary sewer system. Do grease traps have to be cleaned? And if so, how often? So this is a great question. Uh, And the short answer is yes, of course. As far as how often, that will depend on the individual FSC and the type and size grease trap device that they have installed. Cobb County's standard pump frequency and or reporting is quarterly. 
So that means once every three months. And that is for both interiors, so grease traps that are installed inside of the FSC, and for exteriors. And those are the larger grease traps that are installed outside and under the ground. However, as I mentioned earlier, the county can require more frequent pumping, and the frequency of removal is to ensure that there are no overflows of fog from the county's sanitary sewer system. I understand that it might seem like the short end of the stick when you're the staff person assigned to inspect or maintain a grease trap. How do we get all our staff members on the same page when it comes to fog? So again, another great question. I think it helps to develop and stick to a plan. We also highly recommend developing a SOP or a standard operating procedure that outlines the best management practices like the one described earlier, as well as the proper steps to clean a fog spill or maintain your trap when it occurs. When that plan is created, we recommend that you train your staff on a regular basis so they are aware of these procedures for how to handle fog. Putting in place a regular schedule to monitor and check these at your FSC can help take the guesswork out of the equation. Got it. Have a plan and stick to it. I'm sure that there were more BMPs that we can discuss with you, Emily, but unfortunately for today, we are out of time. Thank you so much for being on our podcast series. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. If you would like to learn more about grease management, please visit www.cobwater.org and click on the Compliance tab. To visit our podcast webpage and check out the infographic, just visit cobcounty.org slash cphs. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye-bye. The intro and outro music titled Easy Living is by Agnes Famagia under the Creative Commons 4 license. To visit online, go to filmmusic.io slash song slash 6832 easy living. And for the license, go to creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by slash 4.0.